the head-to-head -head battle versus the MacBook Pro M1 Max and the Asus Zephyrus G15 with the Ryzen 9 5900 HS and RTX 3080 GPU. I've been waiting to do this review for weeks now and I'm super excited that it's here. And here are the benchmarks coming up in just a minute so you know what to expect a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's jump into the build quality and usability of these two laptops, things like color gamut range, battery life, the webcam, the lack of webcam. Did you know that? There's a webcam on the MacBook Pro. There is not on the G15. You might even be able to close the video and make a purchase of the MacBook Pro with that alone but maybe you don't care about the webcam. And that's what we're gonna find out here in this video. First and foremost, let's talk about the build quality. A magnesium alloy chassis over here with the Asus Zephyrus G15. And then on this side, we have the all aluminum chassis of the MacBook Pro. And here are the weights of each of the laptops coming up on the screen now, the weight and thickness. The MacBook Pro actually feels a little bit heavier. Now the weight and thickness are coming up on the screen, so that might be deceiving just off of my arm, but it feels a little bit heavier and they are actually pretty close to the same thickness. As you can see, the Zephyrus is a tad thicker, but not by but not by much. So if you're worried about thin and light, both will do. Now, as far as the form factor is concerned, let's go ahead and stack these laptops up on top of each other and see which one is bigger. They're almost the same. And the craziest thing about them being almost the same is that this is a 16 inch screen and this is a 15 inch screen. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So the two different screens here that we have, we have a taller screen with the MacBook Pro. So you have a whole half an inch more screen on the MacBook Pro M1 Pro Ma Pro and Pro Max. No, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Gosh, those names are a mouthful. Okay, now one thing to point out though is if you're interested in a Asus Zephyrus laptop but you want the 16 inch screen, you can actually get an Intel i9 11900H inside of the Asus Zephyrus M16. And I'll do a full head-to-head -head review between the MacBook Pro and the M16, so keep an eye on the channel for that. But off of these two models, as you can see, the screens are different, much different. Now this is gonna be a slightly sharper screen with the XDR, be a heck of a lot brighter. And if you're curious about the color gamut range and all that, it's gonna be coming up on the screen now. You'll see the brightness, color gamut range, and color accuracy of these two monitors. And the MacBook Pro outshines as far as brightness is concerned, but they're both pretty close as far as the color accuracy and color gamut range is concerned. All right, let's go ahead and spin these two back to back and check out the screen flex. I am gonna take a wager that the screen flex on the MacBook Pro is substantially less. And the craziest thing about the MacBook Pro is I almost, if you look from the top, I'm really trying to push this thing, the screen flex. I can't even get it to flex. It is such a firm screen. However, as you come over here to the Zephyrus, it is very flexy comparatively. So that's a big concern of yours. The MacBook Pro is gonna be a much less screen flexy screen. All right, let's go and look at the bounce. There's much more bounce on the Zephyrus G15 as well. Now we have this long hinge here on the MacBook Pro where we have these two hinges on the Zephyrus G15. But keep in mind the connection points on the MacBook Pro are on the outside. It's not like the hinge you know, connects the whole way through. The connection points are right here on the outside. Um, it just doesn't have that stability bar going across in the middle uh, of the top of the keyboard deck. Speaking of the keyboard deck, let's go ahead and check that out really quickly. So as you see, a much more sleek and refined keyboard on the MacBook Pro 16. You have the black anodized keyboard bed where it's all white and clean over here on the Zephyrus G15. I actually have noticed that the Zephyrus G15 keys almost look a little milky or almost like an ivory color. They're not as white as the keyboard deck, which I find a little disappointing. I wish the keys were as white as the keyboard deck because it almost makes it look a tad dirty even though it's a brand new laptop. Now, coming over here as far as the keyboard feel, I'm gonna give you a quick audio sample of both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear them, and then I'll talk about the differences as far as you know the feel and travel is concerned.
So over on the MacBook Pro, you're gonna have a shorter travel with the scissor switch keyboard. As you heard, it's nice and quiet. And then on the Zephyrus G15, also very quiet, but a slightly longer key travel. So if you like more of a gaming laptop feel, you're gonna be good in the Zephyrus G15. Now looking at the track pads, you can see that the MacBook Pro trackpad makes the large trackpad on the G15 look actually small. This is actually quite a big trackpad. The MacBook Pro trackpad is just so massive uh, that it dwarfs really any other trackpad. And it's actually a vibration click rather than a standard mechanical click. And so as you heard in this sample, it's a little bit quieter, but not by much. I love the trackpad on the G15. If I was gonna pick a trackpad though, I'd have to say, the MacBook Pro trackpad is very smooth. However, there's one thing that drives me nuts about the MacBook Pro trackpads, and that's if you go to drag and drop something, like for instance, just watch my fingers. If I go to go like this, drag, and then hold it, and then keep dragging, it gets confused and it just like stops. Where on the mechanical keyboard, I can go like this, and then kind of keep dragging and keep dragging and keep dragging and keep dragging, keep dragging. You know, like I have more, it's like mechanical, so it doesn't get confused as much. That's one area that honestly annoys me more than you would think. Cause I do a lot of drag and dropping while I'm doing video edits, doing graphic design work, editing thumbnails, even dragging files out of like SD, out of uh, like SSDs onto my hard drive and stuff like that. So that's actually surprisingly annoying about the MacBook Pro's non-mechanical trackpad. Um, before we get too far into the review, let's do a quick sample of the webcam on the MacBook Pro. And remember, the Asus Zephyrus G15 does not have a webcam, so keep that in mind. Here is a test of the webcam. It's a 1080p webcam. Check it out the audio as well to see if you like the webcam, see if it fits for your needs. It's definitely better than the crappy 720p webcams we've had forever. So I'm super stoked that Apple made this move for the 1080p. Next up, let's talk about the ports. If you're looking for a lot of ports, the Asus Zephyrus G15 is gonna be your pick. You have your power port, HDMI, RJ45, USB type A, two USB type C's, and your headphone jack. On the other side, we have our mini SD card slot and USB type A. Now the micro SD card slot is good if you want extra storage, you can slide in an extra you know, 512 gigs of extra storage, um, but it's not really that beneficial if you wanna pull in your footage on the go, you know, if you're doing a photo shoot because the micro SD card is something you don't normally use in a camera. I mean, you can get an adapter and then slide it into your camera, but I've heard there's, you know, mixed reviews about micro SD cards adapted into a camera and, and their performance and reliability. So that's one area that I would ding the port selection on the G15 is that there's no standard SD card slot. Because over here on the MacBook Pro, we have the standard SD card slot, USB type C, which is Thunderbolt 4 and HDMI. And then on the other side, we have the headphone jack, two USB type C's, which are also Thunderbolt, and then the MagSafe is back in the building. Welcome back MagSafe, excited about that. Speaking of MagSafe, they've also given us a brand new charger block on the MacBook Pro. This is a 140 watt charger block. The Asus Zephyrus G15 comes with a 230 watt charger block. It's about that much longer. So it's about um, a third bigger than this charger block. But the really cool thing about the MacBook Pro MagSafe charger is you can charge the laptop to full power from dead in one hour and 41 minutes per my test. So that's fantastic. And you also have incredible battery life with the new MacBook Pro M1 Pro and M1 Max. The battery life is coming up on the screen now for both models. And as you can see, it dominates the Asus Zephyrus G15. Now, the Asus Zephyrus G15 is not a bad battery life. It's actually very good in the respects of gaming battery lives. But the latest chips for MacBook Pro are so energy efficient, it, it really just doesn't stand a chance. Unless they make substantial changes to the chips and GPU and motherboard and how everything's assembled in these non-Apple products, we're gonna really see a lot of struggles in battery life for high performance laptops. Now, if you get into more of the mobile laptops, like something like the Samsung Galaxy, Galaxy Book Pro 360, that has fantastic battery life, almost as good as the MacBook Pro. M1 Pro and M1 Max, but you're not gonna have the video editing and After Effects performance and Photoshop performance that this laptop has. Now, as we're making our way towards the performance benchmarks, let's go ahead and check out the audio experience of each of these laptops. I must say, I'm really impressed with the new MacBook Pro 16 audio. They actually have slightly improved speakers, but the G15 is no slouch with these upward facing bass speakers. Great audio experience for both of them. You'll see the MacBook Pro just slightly better.
Now, concerning the upgrade path of each of these laptops, if that's something you're interested in, you're definitely gonna wanna consider the G15. You can swap out one of the RAMs, so that means you can take it from 16 to 24 or 40 gigs of RAM. You can also add an M.2 drive or swap the current one. So you have two M.2 slots available to you, one populated out of the factory, one unpopulated. As far as the MacBook Pro is concerned, what you purchase it with is what you're gonna get for the life of the computer. You can't add or subtract RAM, you cannot add or subtract drives or anything of that nature. Everything is soldered to the motherboard. So the upgrade path on the G15 is the way to go, not the way to go on the MacBook Pro because it is impossible, unless you're an Apple technician, which I'm not, and I'm sure most of you are not either. It's just life, we're not all Apple technicians, you know? As we're heading into the performance benchmarks, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of either of these laptops, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, what we're gonna have on the screen for the benchmarks is the MacBook Pro 16 M1 Pro base model, as well as the M1 Max base model. Now, the M1 Max is what's closest in regards to performance capability as far as the spec is concerned as the G15 with the Ryzen 9 5900HS, RTX 3080 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte SSD. Okay, so that is what we're looking at here. So if you're looking for what's actually gonna be a strong comparison, the MacBook Pro M1 Max is gonna be about $3,700 out the door after tax, give or take. And then the G15 is gonna be around $23-ish out the door after tax, give or take. Obviously, check the prices below if you want the exact numbers. Okay, so that's where you're gonna save about a thousand plus dollars going with a G15. And we're gonna see in the performance benchmarks if it's worth that extra money to buy the MacBook Pro M1. All right, let's get into Cinebench R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core. As you can see in those tests, the MacBook Pros are being outperformed in Cinebench R23, but as soon as we get into Geekbench, single core and multi-core, they're outperforming the G15. But life is not about simulated benchmarks, so let's get into the real world tests and see what kind of performance we have here. And as moving to After Effects, the G15 is no slouch. It's one of the best laptops I've seen on my channel for After Effects. However, when we look at the performance scores coming out of the new MacBook Pros, they really do beat it out. 100 points for the M1 Pro and 200 points for the M1 Max. Now, things change a little bit when we get into the After Effects render benchmark. And as I explained in my full dedicated review, I was unable to run the actual render benchmark on the MacBook Pros. But what I did was take the render times from the standard After Effects benchmark and then cross-reference them against the G15 with the RTX 3080. And it gave me the result of about 25 to 35% less performance than the RTX 3080. And this is in line with other laptop review channels that have run gaming benchmarks and different rendering tests that show the new MacBook Pro M1 Max and M1 Pros, specifically the M1 Max um, in regards to this test, is about 25 to 35% less in performance as the RTX 3080. So if you're needing heavy rendering performance, I would go for the G15, especially looking at 3D modeling, I would go for the G15 at the moment. Maybe in the future, when they have more Apple silicone native apps, we're gonna see some better performance. But as of right now, this RTX 3080 still kicks it. It's really good performance. All right, moving on to 4K video editing and export. As you can see, the G15 does better in Premiere Pro than the MacBook Pro M1s. Now, as far as the playback is concerned, they both have excellent playback. The M1 Max is gonna have better playback than the G15, but the M1 Pro is gonna slightly struggle at around 1800 drop frames in B-RAW. So they are all good. As far as playback performance, just the G15 and the M1 Max are gonna be slightly better because of just more CPU and GPU computing power. Now, one of my favorite tests is to check how the fan modes correlate with the thermals, export time, as well as fan noise. And unfortunately, the MacBook Pros don't have any sort of manual control of the fan modes, okay? They just kind of do their own thing, which really is fine because they have amazing performance. So how I'm gonna run this test is I'm gonna run this laptop on different resolutions, so like 1080p, 4K, 6K, and this one's gonna be at different fan modes. So you can see the stress that's inflicted on the laptop based on how the fan mode is configured and then based on how the actual resolution of the footage. It's the only way I could get like kind of a semi-decent uh, equal, you know, 
performance stress test for video editing export times. So you can see those coming up on the screen. I hope those are helpful with your buying decision. Now moving on to DaVinci Resolve, great playback for all of the laptops. DaVinci Resolve is very well optimized for playback in the timeline. And then of course you can see the export times coming up on the screen now as well. For Photoshop, the dominating laptop is going to be the Asus Zephyrus G15. However, the thermals are gonna be hotter and it's gonna be a louder laptop. What we're seeing is we're seeing some chip throttling on the MacBook Pros uh, because it wants to limit the performance but it doesn't completely limit it. I mean, a 709 and I think it's like an 816 or 813 is still fantastic performance inside of Photoshop. Really, once you're above the 700s, you're not gonna have any problems in Photoshop. Anything above the 700s is gonna have great performance in Photoshop. So when you get up to the 900s in Photoshop, it's just gonna make sure you have tons of extra ceiling for extra layers inside of Photoshop, very complex projects that you're working on, and you'll have no limitations. But again, these laptops are gonna be silent and run very cool and quiet this laptop's gonna get quite a bit hotter and it's gonna be louder. So really you kind of give and take what you're looking for. What I'm seeing most in this head-to-head -head battle between these two laptops is uncompromised design aesthetic and usability on the MacBook Pro, right? You can run hours of battery life on this laptop, whether you're video editing, you get full performance. It's not throttled by the fact that you're not plugged into the charger. You get all the performance while video editing, all the performance while working in Photoshop. Where this laptop, as soon as you unplug from the charger, it drops you down and you don't get full performance and you have lesser battery life. So the battery life test that was run on this laptop was an iGPU mode. So that means you're not even getting access to that powerful GPU while you're getting excellent battery life. And by excellent, I mean good for gaming laptops. Whereas on the MacBook Pro M1, you're getting full performance and great battery life. That's why these laptops are revolutionary is because of the efficiency in performance, okay? So punch for punch, if you need to be on the go all the time, never plugged into a charger and get great performance, well, you gotta plug in a charger for an hour and 41 minutes to get your battery back up. But if you don't wanna be plugged into a charger and still getting great performance, the MacBook Pro is where it's at. If you find yourself at your desk a lot, plugged in and being plugged in isn't really a big deal, then this is still a fantastic laptop. In fact, in some areas, it's better than this one in regards to performance. So really think about your user experience. Think about your day-to-day -day life. Is this worth the 37-ish hundred dollars, the M1 Max? Or can you get away with around 2,300 with the G15? Think about it, choice is yours. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Otherwise, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.